This is episode two of reviewing your perfume collections and it is a monthly series so if you want a chance for me to review your fragrance collection in an upcoming video make sure you subscribe to my newsletter and send me a photo of your fragrance collection via email as well as all of the names within that collection. I'll put all the links in the description box down below. Let's get straight into fragrance collection number one from At Ser Mania and a little bit of background information from the owner of of this fragrance collection. She is Turkish and lives in Singapore and she's on the search for a warm sweet scent that would go with the Singaporean and Southeast Asian tropical weather. So let's have a look at the collection. There is a mix of designer and niche. I would say more niche versus designer. There's clearly a preference for fresh florals and specifically white florals. We have Infusion Fleur d'Oranger from Prada a beautiful fragrance, highly recommend it if you love a clean smelling orange blossom. Good Girl Gone Bad, Fleur de Portofino, Chef's Kiss from Tom Ford, Elegantly Tokyo from Zara, Osmanthus, Loewe, Ilan Kananga from Chloe. There's actually a few Atelier des Fleurs from Chloe, which is great for that more tropical, super hot weather. There's also quite a few powdery, musky scent profiles with Orphéon from Diptyque, Blanco Gan from Armani, which is very similar to Pure Musk from Narciso, some citruses, some aldehydes. So all in all, there is a love, a very clear love for white florals, aldehydes, and specifically Neroli fragrances. Within the deeper, warmer scents, I can see that there are some notes that are in common, specifically white floral ambers with a fruity nuance. So we have Sunset Hour from Goldfield and Banks, 100 Silent Ways X from Nishane, Gozo, Soleil Neige. So all of these fall within the white floral amber category with a hint of fruit. With that said, there are two fragrances I would recommend. First off, given that you love Neroli and you want a warmer scent profile or sweeter scent profile, give a try to Solar Blossom from Mise en Cire. This is a perfect balance between a sweet honeyed orange blossom scent and something that is more fresh and clean smelling. It really bridges the gap between the two. It is the best one in my opinion and it's not gonna be too overly powering, too sticky sweet, especially when you're living in a hot, humid weather. The second recommendation is also a white floral and it is the new Tubereuse Astral from Maison Crivelli. Now, this perfume is more of a daring option, but you did mention in your email that you enjoyed unique scents that not everyone else has. And given that you like Gozo from Jérôme, which is quite a loud and intoxicating tuberose fragrance, I thought that Tubereuse Astral you could enjoy as well. There is a touch of leather, which is also a nod to 100 Silent Ways from Nishane that you have. There is some leather in there, and I feel like Tuberose Astral is kind of a happy medium between Gozo and 100 Silent Ways from Nishane. It kind of sits in the middle there. It is a beautiful new release, highly recommend it. It's more of a sweet, yummy, fruity tuberose with a hint of suede-like leather in the background. It's also a bit spicy and I think it would go very well with a more humid environment, but I would recommend wearing this for the evenings or date nights. On to fragrance collection number two. So here we have a variety of designer fragrances and some celebrity perfumes as well, namely Katy Perry's Meow, Rebel Fleur from Rihanna, JLo Glow, I think this could be the Miami edition, Cloud from Ariana, Miss Britney Spears, an icon. And there is a little bit of niche with Nishane, Simontal, and Mancera. So right off the bat, this person loves, but absolutely adores, those sweet, yummy, edible fragrances. We can see there's a lot of vanilla, we're seeing some juicy couture, some caramel, pure excess from Paco Rabanne, this yummy popcorn vanilla scent. There's also Girl of Now, which is that vanilla to pistachio note. So whether it's vanilla, caramel, fruits, this person clearly enjoys intensely sweet and edible perfumes. The other side of the collection is more al along the fresher, delicate florals 
with the Chance au Tendre, Chloé Nomad, Narciso Rodriguez. There's also Si Eclat de Parfum. So I would say this fragrance collection has a lot of seductive perfumes. So you're pretty much covered for date night and also to an extent from fall and winter because these fragrances are richer, they're more intense and really sweet. But the thing I would mention that is missing in this collection is more staples for the summer. There is the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, which is great. Also, the JLo Glow Miami is a, a great celebrity fragrance, but I would look for something that stands out more, that is a little bit more unique. And given that this person enjoys sweet, intoxicating fragrances, I have the perfect combination. Try Victor & Rolf's new Flower Bomb Tiger Lily. So it will retain that intoxicating, sweet floral DNA that we all know in love or hate <laughs> from Flower Bomb with the addition of coconut and mango. So it's a tropical twist on Flower Bomb and the coconut is so rich and dense and really yummy. The mango to be fair is really detectable in the opening. It's a juicy tart mango but it's all about that really dense, rich coconut milk scent with the intoxicating sweetness of the florals and flower balm. The second recommendation is also a coconut floral fragrance, but much fresher and lighter, and I would say way more tropical than Victorian Wolves Flower Balm Tiger Lily. This one is Rose Passion from Jimmy Choo, and in my opinion, this is one of the best coconut fresh frangy penny fragrances within the designer world. If you love exotic florals with a fresh coconut twist, this one is perfection. Next up, we have Sarah's fragrance collection, and she left a little note saying that whilst she enjoys wearing her stronger, more noticeable niche fragrances in the colder months, she has yet to find one that she loves for the summertime. So that is a very important piece of information here. Let's have a look at her collection. There is a lot of Jo Malone, which indicates that she enjoys more delicate, softer, feminine florals. We have Red Roses, Wood Sage and Sea Salt, English Pear and Freesia. And building on those delicate, fresh florals, we can see here she has Flora O Fresh, I believe, from Gucci. There is Dolce Garden from Dolce & Gabbana, which is a great frangipani coconut designer scent. One of the best, in my opinion. And funny enough, she enjoys the occasional pop of fruit with watermelon, coconut, strawberry, some pear. And then on the right-hand side of the collection are all about the richer, warmer fragrances, heavily focused around vanilla with gentle fluidity, gold, the world according to Arthur from Van Halligans, which is a stunning incense vanilla, as well as a sample of the changing Constance and then the beast mode, the bombastic, boozy scent. Angel Share from Killian. So within the warmer fragrances, her collection is quite versatile because she can wear these fragrances on a day-to-day -day basis as a signature scent, but also transition into the evening if she's going out, if she's going on a date. But there is something that is missing when it comes to her summer fragrances. And since she has asked for a strong and noticeable summer fragrance, well, I'm gonna recommend two. The first one is Vibrato from Suspiro. So this is a mega strong pomelo to ginger fragrance. If you smell the skin of a pomelo, add crushed ginger and a big dose of ambroxan, that is what this fragrance smells like. It has a tropical, sunny edge to it, and funny enough, this guy in the grocery store stopped me and I was like, why is this guy talking to me? This is weird. He actually was complimenting me on this fragrance. So it does have a really strong sillage, which is nice and it works great in the really high heat. The next fragrance I would recommend is Capeline from YSL. And this has a beautiful floral, but also a vanilla, which all comes together to smell like a luxurious sun tanning lotion. So it has ylang ylang, it has lily, it is so beautiful and has like a saltiness, like a salty breeze. It's as if you were 
applying a lotion on a boat somewhere in the Mediterranean. You had a bit of a breeze and that saltiness is what you get from this scent. It's stunning, highly recommend it, though I would say overspray with this one. On my skin, it doesn't last super long. However, a lot of the people here have told me that it does last on their skin, so try it for yourself. But I think that you would really enjoy it given your love for vanilla and also for delicate florals. Next is the Fragrance Outliers perfume collection. And what a collection this is. We have a variety of scents, designer, niche, there's even some classics in here, like Aromatics Elixir from Clinique, Cartier Panthère, uh, Guerlain Samsara, Cabochard Grey. I mean, this is so interesting. And then also on, on the other hand, we have a love for powdery, musky, iris dominant fragrances. There is Ubigan Iris Deschamps, the Narciso Rodriguez line, Dolce Ingabana La Tempérance, which is a musky scent, I believe. Stark Peau de Soie, Etat Libre d'Orange Putain des Palaces, excuse my French. <laughs> but it's not limited just to iris. There is a general love for powdery scents. We're seeing here from the Notes Gourmande Guimauve et Dragé de Reminiscence. Here, the powdery side is expressed as powdered almond or vanilla or orange blossom which is really interesting because on the other side, the, there's a lot of rich, spicy ambers. So there's like something that is soft and delicate and then something that is really powerful and strong. And within that, we have Carner's Barcelona Ambra de Sur, Moresque Sol Batique, a few Chalimar from Guerlain. Really interesting collection and a note from Kate, who is the owner of this fragrance collection. She lives in Vancouver, BC, so it is cold and there's a little bit of warmth in the summer, but her collection reflects that colder weather, which makes a lot of sense. And she did mention that she loves sandalwood and she's looking to add a few sandalwood fragrances to her collection for summer wearing. Which is really interesting because typically sandalwood fragrances I would recommend for the autumn and winter. So this was a bit of a challenge, but I have found two fresh sandalwood fragrances that would work great for the summertime. The first one is Santalum from Chloe, part of the Atelier des Fleurs collection. And I feel like you could enjoy this given your love for more powdery fragrances. So this is a powdery sandalwood that is so delicate, really beautiful. It does stay closer to your skin, but it has that airy feeling, that delicate, whimsical, airy sandalwood feeling. So it's powdery, a little bit milky and very elegant and I think that you would enjoy it given your love for more of these powdery notes. The second recommendation is Lumière Blanche from Olfactive Studio, and this is a spicier take on sandalwood, but not in a way that feels too overpowering or warm in, in the sense that it would be better for autumn and winter. I find that this fragrance is perfectly adapted for the warmer weather. So you have cardamom, there's star anise, there's cinnamon. There's also a pop of iris, which again would complement your fragrance collection and your taste. So I think that could be a lovely addition. It is clean smelling, quite fresh and not the most long lasting, I will say this. So you do need to overspray with this one. The sillage is a little closer to your skin, but it does play on the fresher side of sandalwood. Next is Sheila Hair Arts Collection. And if I'm not mistaken, this is just purely niche fragrances. Ah, except for one fragrance, which is Tom Ford's Santal Blush. And I don't consider Tom Ford niche, even though the prices are niche. Tom Ford is a designer. And we have a lot of Le Labo, Sun by Rado, BDK, Parfum de Marly. So niche fragrances that are easy to understand. So I would say approachable niche perfumes as opposed to something that is super eccentric like Zoologist. So really likable, easygoing fragrances, but that still have that unique factor to them. Uh, there is a distinct love for woody notes, specifically combined with leather and spices. So we have the Gris Charnel, the Belle d'Afrique, Oh, I just love these fragrances. Black Saffron, uh, Célie from Byredo, Santal Blush from Tom Ford, Bay 19 from Le Labo. And then we have some musky, your clean skin, but better fragrances with another 13, Molecule O2. I think there's another molecular scent in the back. 
I can't read it, but it looks like it. And then we have the Vanillas with Gentle Fluidity Gold. This one is quite popular actually in today's collection. Van Ecstasy, which is a super sweet, rich vanilla and Dama Bianca from Zerzhov. Some florals, and it's a mix of florals here. There's not necessarily a preference for a typical floral. We have some rose, we have some exotic florals, we have some iris, orange blossoms. So it's just a variety of them. This is a very good collection in my opinion. It covers a wide range of different situations and occasions, but we are missing, yet again, some summer options. Clearly here, the summer isn't popular. Like, what is going on, people? Okay, the first recommendation. Based on your love for woody fragrances, I would recommend Santal Greenery from Dries van Noten. Now, this is a sandalwood and fig-based scent. It is extremely fresh. It feels like crunchy green leaves, but without being overly vegetal and an over-ripened fig with the creamy base of sandalwood. It is stunning, it is fresh, it is citrusy, it is light. It's truly a spectacular perfume, completely underrated. You're not gonna smell like everyone else with this scent, and it is perfectly adapted for the summertime. The second fragrance I'd recommend you try, given that you have a lot of different florals, you could be open to another type of floral, a tube rose, because you don't have a tube rose in your collection. Try out Gozo from Jérôme, and this is more of a daring exotic tube rose. And you do have some daring florals in this collection with Hibiscus Mahajad, Iris Malikan, like these are pretty out there. So with Gozo, I want you to picture this. Imagine you are a character in Avatar and you're walking in that fluorescent flora and fauna tropical rainforest. That is the sensation that I get when I smell Gozo. It's an extraterrestrial type of scent, an exotic tuberose that is fruity, that is a bit sweet. It's so powerful, very impactful. It will last all day on the skin and a really great addition for any summer wardrobe if you love white florals with a hint of sweetness. Now, if you want a chance for your fragrance collection to be featured in an upcoming video, please subscribe to my newsletter. Send me a photo of your fragrance collection that is clear to see with all the labels, the names of the fragrances. I'll pop everything in the description box down below. I love to do these videos. They're so fun and it's really cool to see all the fragrances that you have and also to give you some more tailored recommendations. I just have so much fun with these videos. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.